1 Kings, 1 Kings chapter number 11, number 11, and uh, uh, Lord willing, we'll try to speak just a few moments this morning, and uh, on Solomon's downfall, Solomon, Solomon was uh, uh, David's son, he was the tenth one, and uh Solomon was uh, a great man, wisest man and uh, that ever been. He was uh, he was something else, boys. I'll tell you, God had used him greatly, but he had got to his head, gone to his head. Jane and I got to go to. Uh, uh, up on Masada, uh, the, in Solomon's uh, uh, big stables and his bathhouses and all of this, and we walked through it, and uh, we just uh, we was walking through the bathhouse up there, and I just happened to look down and. Uh, there was a little piece, piece of, of tile that had fallen out of the wall. And boy, don't you know, I brought that sucker home. Yeah, I got it right there at the house. And uh, with all of my goodies that came out, and I forgot now how many stables that he had for his horses and all of this and the bathhouses, but it took us just about a day to go through just where his uh, work hands, his uh, uh, stable keepers, and all of this, they bathed and kept those horses and the chariots and all of this up on top of that mountain. And boys, it was something else just to see and to walk through. But anyway, in First Kings chapter 11, if you found your place, would you stand with us in honor of the Word of God? In verse number 9, 10, 11, 12, and we'll read those verses and then uh, uh, return to our seats and look at Solomon's downfall. And the Lord was angry with Solomon because his heart was turned from the Lord. And uh, listen, and God of Israel, which had appeared unto him twice and had commanded him concerning this thing, that he should not go after other gods, but he kept not that which the Lord commanded. Wherefore the Lord said unto Solomon, now listen carefully to this, and the Lord, wherefore the Lord said unto Solomon, for as much as this is done of thee, and thou hast not kept my covenant, and my statutes which I have commanded thee, I will surely rend the kingdom from thee and will listen and will give it to thy servant. Now verse number twelve, notwithstanding in the days I will do, I will not do it for the David thy father's sake, but I will rend it out of the hand of thy Son, Heavenly Father, and Almighty God, as we bow before you today, we just want to thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for loving us, saving us. Now honor the word. I know you will. You said you would. We praise you and love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. Now Solomon, through the the uh, though all of his wisdom, you know, 
Now, uh, he uh, was given, and now God had given every bit of this. He was wise, and he was smart, and he was powerful, and he was wealthy. And you know, a lot of lot of folks now, they'll let things like this just get to their head. And they think, well, now I can do anything, and uh, I'm my own man. And I, I don't have to answer to nobody. And the thing about it was, and he was very human in every part of him. He had all the human aspects and all the human attributes uh, as anybody else. He was just a man. But the thing about it was, he had human weaknesses. He was, he was human. And the thing about it was, he had to answer to God just like you and I will and do. And although these weaknesses caused his downfall, his downfall was caused because he was human. And he was human in every aspect and every attribute become or did come to the surface when he let this thing happen. How did it happen? He got his eyes off of God. He just took his eyes. And you can do it. You can take your eyes off God just for a little while. And boys, I'll tell you, you'll begin to wonder. And these things begin to happen. His downfall is suggestive, and I believe it was. And he began to, he began to go down. He began to go down, and he took his soul with him. He took his kingship. He took every bit of it. But now, it, let's look at a few things. He was defective. He was defective, and how how did this thing begin to happen? It didn't happen. He omitted one thing and one thing that really got him. It one thing that really cost him more than anything else. It was he omitted God. He took God out of the equation. He took God out of it. He began to look at all. Well, look what I got. Look what I've achieved. Look over in chapter 10, if you will, just uh, back up just a little bit and look what he said here. Now you can find in chapter 10 of all of the hundreds, he, King Solomon, he had made all of these. He said, now look up in verse number 16. It said King Solomon made 200 targets uh, of beaten gold, 600 shackles uh, of gold went uh, for one target. Uh, he made uh, 300 uh, shields uh, of beaten gold. Uh, three pounds of gold went, in, went to uh, one shield, uh, and the king put them uh, in the house uh, of the forest uh, of Lebanon. Do you think about uh, all of these gold? Uh, uh, everything was gold and shimmering. Uh, he had diamonds. He had anything Anything, uh, anything that your mind could imagine, uh, and far above that, uh, and boys, uh, I'll tell you, uh, he had uh, he had everything uh, that he needed uh, and or wanted, uh, and he brought it, uh, and he built the greatest temple uh, that had ever been seen. Uh, but he built it for God. Uh, he built a house uh, for God because David uh, could not build one uh, and he put his uh, heart and his life uh, and uh, what was it 
it. Uh, the queen said when she came, uh, she looked and she said, uh, the half has never been yet uh, been told. Uh, and look down uh, in verse number 23. Uh, it said, so King Solomon uh, exceeded all the kings uh, of the earth uh, for the riches uh, and for wisdom. Uh, now look in verse number 24. Uh, and he said, uh, and all of the earth uh, sought uh, 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 to uh, uh, Solomon. Uh, and he said uh, uh, to hear uh, his wisdom. Uh, now look at the next, uh, look at the very last part of that verse. Uh, that's what really uh, got me, uh, boy, yesterday uh, when I began to read this. Uh, and he said, uh, which God uh, had put uh, in his heart. Uh, boy, God put it in there. Uh, brother, he was God's man. Uh, and God uh, gave him a heart uh, like he had no man, uh, no king uh, in all of God's earth uh, had ever, uh, ever sought, uh, ever thought of ever having. Uh, brother Saul, uh, well, I mean Solomon, uh, was God. God's man, uh, Saul, uh, Solomon, uh, was God's king, uh, uh, the Bible says, uh, and that makes it so. Uh, there was no other king uh, on the earth uh, as wise as this man, uh, brother. Uh, but the thing about it was, uh, 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 he uh, look, uh, now what had happened uh, in just a little while, Look in verse number one of chapter 11. And it said, but the first word in chapter 11, in verse number one, but Solomon, boy, I'll tell you, that little three letter word got Solomon in trouble. But Solomon, boy, that's a a personal pronoun uh, boy oh Solomon uh, but Solomon uh, boy uh, Jake uh, that's one of your goats uh, but Solomon uh, but Solomon uh, loved many strange women uh, boy I'll tell you uh, he took that heart uh, and he took it off of God uh, he started walking through the world uh, he began uh, once he loved uh, and obeyed uh, and he followed the will of God uh, but uh, he took his eyes off of God uh, and muddy God uh, began to take him down uh, God began to walk away from him uh, why? because Solomon uh, walked away first Amen. you know uh, God knows from the beginning what you're going to do. And God knows from the beginning what it's going to take to bring you back. Brother, God, God may take everything you got, but God will bring you back. But he said, but Solomon loved many strange women and together with the daughter of the Pharaoh. Boy, I'll tell you right now, what, what did dad do? What did dad do down the road many years before? David, when the kings went to war, dad sitting on the porch and looked over there here come dad's son again, walking in the same steps, walking right along. Think about it. Folks, I'll tell you right now, you're walking sin. Be sure your sin will find you out. 
It'll find you out somewhere down the road. There's a payday. There's a payday. Not only once he loved and obeyed God, but next, I'll tell you right now, he disregarded God. He disregarded the omnipotence of God. He disregarded what God had told him and how God had loved him and what God had given him and where God had put him. Look what God had done for him. And boy, he said, but hey, look what I've got. I can have everything but Put God in the rearview mirror. I'll just bring all of these home with me. I'll just go down to Pharaoh's house and I'll show him what I can do. Boy, I can take anything I want to take. But he said, uh, this was a fatal mistake. And you know it always is. When you begin to walk down and walk out Brother, and you start making that defective choice. Number two, disobedience of God's direct commands. Now, God had told him up there. God had told him, and look in verse number nine, and I read it to you. God said, I've told you, Solomon, but I've told you twice God don't have to take you two or three times, but God told Solomon twice. God come and told him, and he said here in verse number nine, and he said that the Lord was angry with Solomon. And he said to him, uh, he said, because his heart was turned from the Lord and, and uh, turned, turned from the Lord God of Israel, which had appeared unto, now listened unto him, what? Twice God had turned to him and he had told him and the thing about it would and God said you shall not uh, compromise those uh, without trouble. You become an idol. You be be become putting idols. Look at verse 2 of chapter 9. And of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel. What? He is said to the children of Israel, you shall not. You shall not. Now, now listen. He said, you shall not. You shall not go unto them, neither shall they come unto you. For surely they will turn away your heart after their gods, and Solomon cleave unto these, what? In love. He went to them, and they began to turn his heart away from God. They began to turn him away from them. Worked with a man 12, uh, almost 13 years every day. Went to a Baptist church and he said on, he said he sat on some kind of a board in that Baptist church. Every, ain't been in there for years evidently. Don't know how long. Him and his wife, they separated or she died, I don't remember which. But the thing about it was, and he lived right, right, down here in Wilkesburg. And the thing was, he met this lady. Her husband had died. And he, she was a Mormon. And he married her and joined the Mormon church. 
and you talking about a hardcore Mormon. Everywhere he went, he was trying to build up the Mormon church, build up what Brigham Young had done. Oh, what? All of this, boy, giving out literature, showing everybody his testimony in the book that he had written out. Told me he'd been baptized for me at the temple up in Washington, D.C. And he's talking about the temple being built down in Atlanta, going down there to be baptized for me to try to get me converted. Boy, they were baptizing for all of those that died back in the uh, uh, 1800s and then they was going back to the 1700s. Well, I want to tell you, brother, the water don't wash away your sins. Uh, it takes the blood of the Lamb of God. Uh, brother, without the blood, uh, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. Uh, and brother, I'll tell you right now, uh, you've got to honor God uh, first and above all. Uh, brother, he died for your sin. Uh, he died for my sin uh, and without you acknowledging him uh, and believing that the blood will cover your sin uh, and uh, confessing them to the Lord Jesus Christ uh, and living for him uh, you're going to die in your sin uh, and you're going to hell just sure uh, as I'm standing here this morning uh, and I'll tell you right now uh, Solomon got away from God and uh, he began to walk away from God uh, and God took everything that he had. Uh, brother, I want to tell you right now uh, the thing about it, uh, he went against God's command uh, and God took what he had uh, and God will bring it down. Uh, Brother, listen to what he said here. Uh, he said, do you, uh, do you stay away uh, from strange flesh, brother? Uh, you, uh, they married, uh, you marry, uh, and you stay with your own kind. Look at our nation. Look at our nation. Brother, Everyone is marrying the blacks with the whites, the Indians with the others, uh, brother. It's one nationality going after the other nationalities. Uh, and look at uh, them over uh, in Israel, uh, brother. The Israelites uh, are fighting against the Arabs. Uh, and brother, uh, and God has just told them, uh, he said, you don't go after them. Brother, I'm telling you right now, God wants us to stay what we are. Some folks don't like it, and brother, you can put it in your smite and poke it. Brother, I'm telling you the truth, and I know this goes out over the air, but I may get some calls on it, but that's all right. I'm turning off my house phone Wednesday. And that's a fact. I'll have cell phone only. And it's on the church card, by the way. And I can hang up when you dial an unlisted number. All right. He not only compromised, but he encouraged and he participated in their activities. Do you know he had a bunch of children by him? He not only that, but boy, he had a quad of them. He had a house full of them. Boy, he loved his women. 
Look, you think he didn't look in verse 3. He only had 700 wives, but he had and princesses and 300 contrabines, and his wives turned his heart away. How'd you like to have Delaney that many husbands? Oh, dear Lord. I'll tell you what, I'd have to spend a lot of time up here just marrying you, wouldn't I? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Boy, you better get to picking them out in a hurry. It's, you're going to be an old woman time you get through all them, I mean, just picking them out. No, but the thing about it is, I got a book at home. Some of you need to read it, not all of you. Brigham Young. Boy, he had, he had all of these wives. And he, he had them, and this lady come to him one day, and she said, he said, now which one are you? And she said, I'm number 58. It's in the book. I'm going to tell you right now. Gene, which number are you? <laughs> I hope she's number one. Okay. But he neglected the ordinances. He neglected God's Word. He neglected prayer. He didn't pay no attention to God's Word. You say, how do you know? God told him twice. Look at Solomon's downfall. How many times does God have to tell us? He said, your sin will find you out. He said in this word, in his word, he said, the thing about it is to come ye out from among the world and be ye separated. All about sin, prayer. He said, pray without ceasing. And God's word is a reservoir for righteousness. Amen. It's a reservoir. It contains everything. But you know what we are? We are a cistern that don't hold water. We're a bucket that's got a hole in it. We'll pray and then we'll walk off and our bucket's done leaked out. We are. What is, I believe it's Haggai. I ain't sure about this. Somebody help me. But the thing about it, we're putting our prayers in a bag with holes in it. I believe we've got a, we've got a, we've got a bag with holes in it. We need to pray with solid assurance. We need to pray. Solomon, he, he didn't pray. He enjoyed and went with the world every day. He cultivated his besetting sin. He just cultivated it every day. Every day. The thing about it, one sin mentioned which multiplied into many. You know what that was? It was in verse number one. That besetting sin was strange women. It just... It began to grow because one went to another. Look what it says in verse number one. But King Solomon loved many strange women. He cultivated that. It just began to grow one right after the other. I'm talking about Solomon's downfall. He went from one to the other. The Armorites, the Edomites, the Zidonianites, and the Hittites. He just went from one nationality to the other. And God said, don't you do it. Don't go. Don't you do none of this. They turned his heart from God, and this was a rebellion against God. 
But he said, hey, look at what I got. Look what God has given me, and I own it all. But God don't matter right now. I own it. I own it. I possess this. I'm in control. The queen of the south has come up here and said, I ain't never seen nothing like this. Oh, look what this man has built. This man didn't build it. God did. God built every bit of this. But Solomon was getting ready to hit the bottom. Solomon was getting ready to lose everything. All oh, the thing about it. He built, I'm closing this thing up, open idolatry. Open idolatry. He said, it don't, God, it don't matter. It don't matter what you say. Look in verse 7. Verse 7, then Solomon Build and high place for Shemos. Oh, the abomination of Moab. Oh, you go back. I won't take time. Boy, I'll tell you right now, that was an abomination to God. Amen. To God Almighty. This was a slap in God's face. You just do some homework on Moab. Who was Moab? It just smacked God right straight in the face. And lots, I mean, Solomon said, I don't care. I don't care. Look what I got. Look, look at everything that I got. I can buy the world and it don't matter. It don't matter. Wendell, it just don't matter. I got all the money. I got all this gold and all of these trinkets, but he did build a place for this in the high place and it was an even abomination to Moab and he said in the hill that was before now look where he built it at it's just like coming out here and building a statue to some unknown God right here at our church but you better believe I'll get me an axe and chop it down. Amen. You better believe I will. And I'll sit far to it and burn it, buddy, in a, in a heartbeat before Jerusalem. This is a slap in God's face. Now look what Solomon did. Look what he did. All right? And for Malich. Oh, dear God, the abomination of the children of Achman. Oh, dear God. And God said, don't you even fool with them. Don't you go nowhere around them. Hey, I got all this gold. God, you don't fool with me. I've got all these women I've got a thousand right here at my hand. You don't fool with me, God. You just, you just don't mess with me. And God said down there in verse 9, I done told you twice. I done told you, boy. Now you're going to the woodshed. But he said... And he burned incense. Look in verse 8. And likewise did he for all his strange wives. And he had a thousand of them. 
He had, well, he had uh, had 700. Oh, dear God, did he take a lot of gas? <laughs> he better took a lot of lighter fluid or matches or something. But listen, his strange wives which he burned incense and he sacrificed unto what? Their gods. Every one of them wives that was from another country or something, he, he built something for their gods. Now look what he did. And he went out there and this was the tradition, their tradition instead of the scriptures. This was carnality, carnal, instead of spirituality. And this was customs instead of conviction. And this is where a lot of folks are today. Customs instead of conviction. Folks, I'll tell you right now, we're, we're living in a world. We're living in a place right now. We're living in a situation. Anything goes. It don't matter. It don't matter. Let it go. Let it go. It don't matter. We're not even going to have a Caucasian race no more. We're not going to have anything anymore because look at the world. Interracial marriages on every hand. Nobody serving the true and living God anymore. There's very few in a church anymore. I'm talking about the true church. I'm talking about the real church. I'm talking about the one that's serving the true and living God. I'm talking about the one that preaches the King James Bible, 1611. They've got every book in the world. Oh, yeah, that old book, you need to get rid of it, preacher. You need to get the new edition. I have, I've got, I believe I've got just about every one of them that's out there. And brother, they sure don't match this. One. Let's stand. You need to serve God. Without God, without Him, without Christ, without the blood, there's no remission of sins. Without that shedding of that blood, His precious blood, we must be saved. Solomon, oh, did he lose out. Oh, I believe he went to heaven. I had a long time studying this book before I figured out that he went to glory. It's just by God's merciful grace. Yes, I believe he went to heaven. I sure do. But buddy, I'm going to tell you right now, it's just by God's mercy that he did. Buddy, he played the part of a fool. He lost it. He lost what he had along the way. Don't lose what you got. Just live for Him and keep your blessings. Heavenly Father and Almighty God, as we leave this place today, I want to thank you for your blessings. God, you've been so good to us. Oh, precious Lamb of God. God, you've kept us down life's road. And Lord, you've 
given us our heart's desire in the will of God. God, You've loved us and saved us. Lord, these many years. And God, You placed us here in the best church I've ever pastored in these 42 years. God, I wouldn't trade this little church for all the churches. Oh yes, Father, they're be they've been bigger. They've been much greater numbers. But Father, Lord, the power of God that we have in this church. And Lord, the love and the, oh dear God, the presence of you and the Holy Spirit of God that's here. I just want to thank you, Lord, for your presence here. God, I pray, Lord Jesus, God, just use us, Lord, and keep us ever close to you. God, don't never let us fail you. But Lord, I know we will. And Lord, when we do, Lord, just nudge us back in line. Lord, just keep us close to the dripping of the blood, Lord, close to the cross. And God, just help us stay, Lord, close to you. Lord, that's where I want to be. I just want to be at the foot of Calvary. I just want to be at the feet of the Lamb of God. Lord, where you can use us. God, help us not be, Lord, one Lord above the other. But Lord, help us, God, to be one that's lifting up the other. Lord, that's my heart's desire. Now, Lord, go with us to our homes. Go with us and help us, Father, and strengthen us, body and spiritually. We thank you and we praise you for all that you do and have done. Amen. I love you. Lord willing, Wednesday night.